Hey, happy homebrew Wednesday. So tonight we're joined by my Irish Red. So uh, I actually, so I can't take too much credit for the recipe on this one because I actually stole it from Brewing Classic Styles mm. and uh, kind of trimmed it up a little bit. But it did really well in our member only competition. Took first place, which yeah, I was pretty happy. That's really well. I mean, well. It scored like forty one. That's which that's is pretty, pretty good for me. So yeah, that's pretty good for anybody. Yeah. I'd be so tickled with a forty one. Let's see. I don't know. So there should have been more lead up than that, huh? I, I'm only, <laughs> you can only say so much. You only that. say so much. You, you know, it's... So I wanted to go ahead and get the tasting and review of this out of the way because I'm almost out of it. Oh, yeah. I mean, six gallons and I split it with someone else. So... Yeah, so I realized I didn't... Uh, I almost didn't get any of this. I think you brought some, brought some to the last... Club meeting, yeah, where I had some, but that was the first time I had it. Oh, yeah, I just oh, well, you've been busy, so yeah, I'm gonna brew it again because I'd like to, yeah. So the hits it took where it was too dark, and oh, which yeah. it's barely too dark, yeah, that's and, and I'd like to see it. And they, I'd like personally, I'd like to see a little more malt and caramel flavor in it, yeah. So I was gonna knock the barley down a little bit, maybe try to do a little caramelization in the kettle, mm, yeah. But it's got a nice malt aroma. Um, it's really light, and I, I think my personal preference for Irish Reds would be closer to like an Imperial Irish Red mm. with a lot of malt flavor. And, and so, but if you read the style, this is this is pretty much right on. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of light, but it's well, and it's supposed to be the Irish version of an ESB. Okay. You know, just not bitter. I'm sorry, a best bitter, I think. So it's not really bitter. It's just. Yeah. You know, a light session beer. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what's the ABV? You so know? the ABV on this is like four and a half percent. Oh, four point two percent. Yeah. Okay. So as always, we'll have the recipe down in the show notes. But uh, for a six gallon batch, I used eight pounds nine ounces of Maris Otter, three and a half ounces of caramel forty, three and a half ounces of uh, caramel one twenty three and a half ounces of roasted barley. Uh, I also put some chalk, chalk, lactic acid, Epsom salt, baking soda, calcium chloride, gypsum, uh, some more, and then again in the mash. Um, I think I was going for a, uh, like a Dublin water okay, profile, I think. Mm -hmm. So, and then it has at 1.55 ounces of East Kent Goldings at, let's see here, at 5% alpha acid at 60 minutes and that's it. And then mm. uh, the Irish ale yeast. Hmm. Yeah. So, and I did an all grain on it, or, you know, just a standard mash in the cooler. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. You didn't oh, do I should have pulled that Brew in a bag or anything? No, no brew in a bag. And I, I mashed it at, uh, I don't know why I mashed it up. I should know. Anyway, it's in the recipe. You know, it's going to be middle of the road, like 152. Somewhere around there. Sorry, I'm yeah. using the Beersmith mobile client and I don't really know where to find yeah, too much in it. Yeah. So a single infusion medium body. Uh, medium body? Yeah, yeah. I think that's like 154. I think a full body is 156. Yeah, so oh, so so somewhere the around there, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. <clears throat> yeah, so in the mid 50s, 150s. Yeah. What kind of yeast? Uh, Irish ale yeast. Okay. Yeah. So I should give the number. Do, do, do. I should have also printed this out. Oh, uh, I called it better red than dead. Oh, so, that's good. I like yeah. that. Yeah, no statement about my position on communism. Just thought it was a funny turn of phrase. <laughs> it would be a position on my communist buttons. WLP004. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, so, you, I thought the, the <laughs> I thought that it's better dead than red. Where this is better red than dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Right. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm not a communist. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Um, so this is my my overall thought. I mean, yeah, it's really like kind of refreshing almost. It's yeah. Nice and light. So this is almost like a summer beer for people who prefer slightly darker beers. Yeah, or even just maltier. Maltier, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I like, I've always liked Irish Reds because they're just a great session beer. Mm -hmm. You can drink two or three of them. You know, it's not yeah. a big deal. It's got flavor to it. It's, you know, it's not going to fill you up. Yeah. 
That's really good. Like I said, I prefer a little more caramel in it, and if you get a little toffee, then that's high marks for me, but. Yeah. So are you thinking that if you, because you, you said you had roasted barley in that recipe? Yeah. If you kind of, that was three ounces of. Like, room, three and, room, and a half, yeah. So if you, you going to eliminate it? Or no, just, I was going to back off a little bit just, just to get the color down and yeah. then try to replace some of the flavor with maybe some caramelization. Yeah. Because a long okay. time ago, I did Charlie Papazian's Irish Red recipe, and it's an extract with steeping grains. And uh, we had a bunch of people over, and I was doing it in the back porch. And um, when I was all done brewing and I racked the beer, there was this, just this glob of burnt you know, LME on the bottom of the kettle. And that beer was delicious. I mean, <laughs> it was so good. And I, I'm sure the caramelization had to have something to do with it. I, I, can't, I can't help but think it would. Hmm. That's a good so there you have action. it. Nice and easy. Yeah, no, that's yeah. okay. Hmm. Yeah, well, I'm kind of bummed. I didn't enter the competition. I brewed it in Irish Red. I was doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of. I kind of wish I had. But yeah. yeah, we've been doing these member-only competitions in the Homebrew Club, and that one had, I think, 12 entries. Yeah. yeah. It was, I, I mean, our most popular one yet. So, yeah, um, yeah I was really excited. We'll see how... I like seeing people brew. I like brewing. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of the whole point of clubs, right, is to kind of get everyone excited and doing the thing and talking about it. I thought that's what you do before your wife kills you for talking about beer so much. After you've bored all of your friends... <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they're like, will you shut up about homebrewing? Well, that's the funny thing about homebrewers is that I, I haven't found one yet that would be like, okay, I'm kind of done talking about this. They yeah. talk like for a whole week straight and yeah. we'll just talk about beer. That's it. Have you thought about? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. yeah, so I mean, that's, I mean, that's one of the main reasons I seeked out a homebrew club was because you know, it's like, I got no one to talk to. The wife doesn't want to hear any more about it. None of my yeah. friends want to hear any more about it. I'm just sitting in my garage, you know, brewing beer. Hey, Mike, this is pretty good. You know, <laughs> stop talking to yourself. No, you stop talking to yourself. <laughs> Pay attention to your mass temperature. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Funny. So if you don't, if you haven't been to a local homebrew club meeting, uh, by all means, go check one out. You yeah. can check it out for free. Usually they're cheap. Um, but you can go as a guest without joining. Um, if you're in the Colorado Springs area, visit bboppp.org, Brew Brothers of Pikes Peak. Yep. Yeah. Or you could Google it. There's a Facebook page. Um, yeah. Or if you're homebound or just don't like going out and socializing quite that much, they have online brew clubs too. Yeah. Well, of so. course. I mean, we post this video to the BrewTube uh, Facebook group. Right. So there's BrewTubers out there. and That's a good group of folks. Yep. Yeah, so... Well, that seems like a lot of them are on the other side of the pond, but that's fine by me. That's, yeah, that's, well, yeah. obviously. Exactly, yeah. We're okay with... Well, they're with brewing the, hazy IPAs over there. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Well, I think they... I are. mean, they do brew a lot. Yeah, of those, it was but like, yeah. oh, but that's... Actually, okay. you get a lot of neat pictures of beer engines. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't delved into that yet, so... <clears throat> no. Well, yeah, good luck finding one around here. That would yeah. be interesting, though. Although, if... There's one to be had. I'm sure you'll find it and you'll buy it. On Craigslist. <laughs> Dude. What? I'll find it and I'll buy it. You will. Because it's cool. <laughs> Maybe. I just better not get obsessed about it. Because then I'll definitely have three of them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they showed you my beer engine yeah. collection. What? What is that? <laughs> so, um, so what do you got coming up for brewing? Well... Next month, the club is doing like this. Past month, we you know we talked about it. We're doing uh, Rogan beer, which I think should be interesting because I think some of the people that have expressed interest sounds like they've done rye beers, but I don't know if anybody's done a Rogan beer. Yeah. So I'm, I'm real interested. So Rogan beer is like 50% rye, yeah. um, and traditionally done with half of ice and yeast. Um, I'm going to do mine with just a German lager, like the Oktoberfest yeast or Marzen yeast, and. Uh, I'm really interested to see if I can get the spicy flavor people talk about with rye because yeah. there's only been one time where I really caught anything that I thought was spicy. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I've had one or maybe two rye beers and I could see where they would say spicy, but I don't think it's spicy in the sense like a, a Saison spice, you know, it's not pepper. Yeah. You know, it just kind of has like a... Yeah, so that's why I'm hoping with 50% so, yeah. rye it'll be dominant. Yeah. You know. 
Yeah, so and, uh, you know, I'm looking for like a punch you in the face with it, mm. so this way I can really know what it tastes like. Yeah. yeah. Um, hmm. That sounds like that might be an opportunity for a um, a tea tasting, a grain tea. Oh, do with rye. Do with some rye and something else. That might be worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. Just to see. Yeah. Huh. So we'll have to think about that. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. And I, of course, I'm brewing a Rogan beer as well. But you know, yeah. like I said, lager. He's going to do ale. I'll do the heavy yeah. weights and yeah, been been reading up on that and ferment it low to try to encourage the clove. Yeah. And you're you know, actually so. running the competition, aren't you? That's you know, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. So yeah. there might not be a competition at all. <laughs> there will be a competition. <laughs> we'll have a competition right here. Which one's yeah. better? Yours. Okay. Congratulations. No, there'll so, be yeah. a competition. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the deadline's the end of August. So we'll probably know something. If it's anything like the last couple of comps, I'll be bottling mine the week of the deadline. So <laughs> after every, you picked everyone else's up, and you'd be like, oh, I should probably bottle mine. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I think that's all I got planned for now. Um, next month is in the Colorado Springs. We have the um, Feast of St. Arnold's Homebrew Competition, uh, which, if you're watching this video, it's too late to enter. Um, I'm inter interested in seeing that. And then the following week, I believe it's the 14th, is the Feast of St. Arnold's. Uh, 14th, yes. Yeah, 14th. <coughs> Saturday, Saturday. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Saturday the 14th. That was a movie. Yeah. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It's comedy. Yeah, it's yeah. Kind of comedy. like a naked gun type of thing, right? I think so. Yeah. yeah I, I don't think. I don't or even scary know movie. Watched. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, sorry. Don't derail that conversation. So now we got to explain what naked gun was. No. no I'm just kidding. Yeah, they can look at it. Just up. Wikipedia, yeah. Just Google it. Let's know something. You'll thank us later. Yeah. Um, stop calling me Shirley. That wasn't <laughs> naked gun. That was airplane. Um, but yeah, so, let's see. Yeah, that... The only other stuff I have is the Rogan beer, and then I'm going to start doing Pilsners more often. I think I was telling you, so I just haven't decided what kind of Pilsner, if I'm going to do Czech or German. Yeah. yeah, I just want to start up my lager game. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about, so I, oh, and you know, I meant to take some pictures and do a video, but I haven't yet. Um, I just got rid of, did we talk about me getting rid of my fridge and getting a new fridge? Either way, we bought a new fridge, and I got the old fridge, and I turned it into a huge kegerator. It's a side by side. I got four kegs on the right side, two shelves of beer, and the left side is going to be for lagers, right? And I just need to finish that up because I want to start putting some lagers in there for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just. It'd be nice to do like a pressure fermentation experiment, you know, brew something now, lager it, and then in three months, brew it again and do it under pressure and compare them side by side. Yeah. Well, you have two. Do you have enough room in the. Your freezer side to do have two. We know you should only. Have I'm hoping to be able to fit four on the freezer side. Yeah. Well, so my thought is is that you could do a big batch and then split it. Mm -hmm. Like you do at the same time, you ferment pressure ferment one half, and then traditionally ferment the other half. Well, the only issue with that is that you want. So the idea of pressure fermenting a lager is that you don't need to condition it. Mm -hmm. Like you do with a lot of regular well, lagers. So, so yeah, if I brew them at the same time, they'd both be cold conditioned for the same amount of time. Unless I left it out at room temps. No, we'll have to talk about it. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I've been listening to a lot of the Brewlosophy podcasts lately, and they're, they uh, advocate, well, maybe not advocate is a strong word, but they talk a lot about warm fermenting. And I wanted to try that with my last... Uh, last lager, my Hellas, and we just didn't. So I think I might try that one of these days too. So I'll get a, I, can, I can't pronounce the name of the strain, but uh, Heid Stefan or something like that mm -hmm. is the strain of yeast that I guess is tolerant to up to like mid 60s. So I think that'd be interesting to try. Oh, and that's a lager yeast. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. it's a lager. So it's like a, like the WLP whatever German lager yeast I think is is one. And oh, okay. So there's and uh, Safael. Uh, 3470. Oh, yeah. That's so is it like that name, Westfoot, whatever, yeah. Weinstein something four, or has like a number after it? Mm, maybe. I don't know. I didn't see it. Yeah, just okay. Because I think I was looking at Mr. Yeasty. Oh, yeah. And was looking at the, the Oktoberfest yeast. Because mm. uh, the article I read was talking about using the White Labs one. Uh -huh. And the same name, I'm sorry, they're talking about using Y yeast. 
and the same name yeast from White Labs or similar name yeah. is a different strain. Oh. So I went with the, the strain that's the same. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's a little confusing. So it's like Bavarian Bavarian Lager is the Y yeast version, okay. and then like Old Bavarian Lager or something like that. It's mm -hmm. a White Labs name, and it's a different strain. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. I think this one was the, the more popular. Those strains that I'd heard and used before in the past. Yeah. So it was like you know German Lager yeast, and the, that was the one. Yeah. Yeah. And then I knew it was the thirty four seventy was was it as well. Like, oh, crap. It's what I used in the past and works great fermenting cool. Yeah. So you should try doing it a little warmer. warmer. So where are you going to ferment it at? Mm, just like, oh, I mean like you said up to 60. Do you mean you're <clears> not going to exceed that or? Yeah. Um, I probably just do it like I do with my ales, which is my storage room stays at that 65 range. Okay. So you'll exceed it by a little bit, but not much. Mm, I think it's right, right about where I recall them talking about for me because oh, okay. I think they're doing it like 66. Oh, okay. So okay, it's yeah. like right in that same range. Yeah, and you got the brew jacket too, so you can yeah. keep it there. I'm so sure I could, you know. yeah, so I could keep it there if I wanted to. I don't know. Nice. Yeah, that's, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, so summer got busy. I'm looking forward to getting back to doing more videos and, and brewing. I mean, I've been brewing a lot, but I can't keep up. Yeah. So I've been, I just haven't had time. The weekends have been, we've been doing a lot of work around the house yeah like to, he's been like a landscaper lately yeah nuts so almost, well almost halfway done with it but i did schedule some some brew time so Good. I, 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 got, well, I got to do the rubbing beer so yeah i'm gonna do that sooner than later and let it kind of give time to age and mellow yeah i gotta try to squeeze that in because you know this week something i get next weekend which i should do some house stuff keep the wife from yelling at me and then the following week is the comp. The following week is the festival. So, yeah, it comes comes fast. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. all right. Um, I don't know. You got anything else? No. So yeah, great beer, Mike. This uh, is. Oh, thanks. This I appreciate awesome. it. Yeah. So if you have any recommendations for how to improve the Irish Red or what a recipe you like, let us know. As as you know, or we mentioned the recipes down below in the link in the show notes. Um, till next time. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for watching our video. Check out our website at coloradobrewtalk.com for more great content. While you're there, be sure to leave us a comment or drop us a line with your thoughts. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at CO Brew Talk, or follow the links below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future content. Or episodes. That's the case, baby. <laughs>